My name is Colby Bruce, and this is my project on Jennifer Dewadna and CRISPR Cas9. Dewadna's parents are Dorothy Jane Williams, who held a master's degree in education, and Martin Kirk Dewadna, who held a PhD in English. Her father taught American literature at the University of Hawaii at Ailo. Her mother was a history lecturer, and Dewadna grew up with two younger sisters, Ellen and Sarah. Growing up in Hawaii, she loved exploring the Big Island and looking at the exotic flora and fauna. This fostered an early interest in science and discovery, and led to her doing work under mycologist and family friend Don Hemmes at his lab, and then later learned to use an electron microscope. Duanda went to Elo High School, graduated from Pomona College in California with a degree in chemistry, and later went to Harvard, which she graduated from in 1989 with a PhD in biochemistry. Following that, she continued postdoctoral studies at the University of Colorado. Dwanna herself is quoted saying the following regarding her mentors. Mentors are critical, and fortunately for me, I've worked with absolutely outstanding scientists at every stage of my career. Such individuals include Jack Sotak and Tom Cech, who both either had or would earn a Nobel Prize for their work. Working at Yale, then later UC Berkeley, allowed her to complete her first major work in life, the discovery of the 3D structure of ribozymes, which shone light on their enzymatic activity. This led to her becoming interested in small interfering RNAs, which then led to her interest in CRISPR. She's held numerous jobs and positions throughout her life thus far, being a professor at Yale, then UC Berkeley, the Lee Ka Shing Chancellor's Chair in Biomedical Sciences at UC Berkeley, and the Chair of the Chancellor's Advisor Committee on Biology at UC Berkeley. Emmanuelle Carpentier, a French microbiologist, was the woman who got Duadna interested in CRISPR. Together, they formed a research team with one of Duadna's postdocs, Martin Janak, as the team lead. Together, they crystallized the Cas9 protein and modeled its 3D shape and noted its function and programmability. CRISPR-Cas9 is an immunological system found in some bacteria and archaea. CRISPR stands for clustered regularity interspace short palindromic repeats, referring to segments of RNA, and Cas9 is the functional protein component of the system which identifies foreign DNA that matches the CRISPR sequence and removes it. Duadna's team hypothesized that Cas9 was involved with the maturation of CRISPR RNA and the guiding of the Cas9 protein to target DNA by way of CRISPR RNA, though they had yet to deduce but sought to find out what the actual methodology was by which Cas9 cleaved its target DNA. The primary processes and equipment without getting too specific and tedious are gel electrophoresis machines and thidium bromide stains for visualization, size exclusion chromatography for purification, polymerase chain reactions for DNA multiplications, incubators, freezers, and liquid nitrogen. Put simply, their procedure consisted of the production and purification of CRISPR RNA, Cas9 proteins, and tracer RNA. The three were combined in different combinations with the target DNA, and then run through a gel electrophoresis machine to test what combinations produce their desired cleavage, then use different different CRISPR sequences to test programmability. They found that the target DNA was only cleaved when CRISPR RNA, Cas9, and tracer RNA were all present in that without tracer RNA, Cas9 would bind non-specifically, and that by binding their CRISPR RNA sequences, they could program the system to cut the DNA at the side of their choosing. Jennifer has mostly left work with the CRISPR, CRISPR Cas9 system to others, though one of the startups she helped co found is currently working on a protein dubbed Cas X, which is smaller and could be more nimble than Cas9, and the later discovered Cas12 proteins, and it could be used to more easily and precisely edit DNA than Cas9. The ability to program CRISPR to achieve desired DNA edits is a massive boon to the field of genetics and is paving the way for future research and technology that greatly increases the power in the hands of geneticists. We can only begin to imagine what can be done with CRISPR in the coming years. Perhaps the single coolest thing that may come out of CRISPR that isn't the total eradication of genetic disorders, which would be awesome, is the potential to make humans more suited to space travel and living on the Martian surface by using CRISPR to edit for radiation resistance, resistance to bone and muscle atrophy, lower oxygen requirements, and even the ability to be less smelly. CRISPR is not without controversy, of course. There has been major concern regarding the editing of the human genome and whether modification should be only somatic, aka non-heritable, or whether it should be germline, aka heritable, and what the implications for that could be, such as accidental mutations causing unforeseen effects, which then bleed into the Gene pool. Jennifer, along with several other biologists, are against current use of CRISPR in clinical trials and is broadly against the use of CRISPR in germline editing, and she's personally called for a moratorium on clinical use. Despite CRISPR being a new technology, it's already produced a bit of a movement, even spawning a Netflix docuseries on natural selection, a few hours so long episodes featuring rogue geneticists experimenting on themselves using CRISPR, as well as a story of a boy whose progressive blindness was cured using CRISPR. Given the current present situation with the COVID-19 pandemic, Jennifer is leading a test site that processes over a thousand samples a day, and the company she helped co-fund, Mammoth Biosciences, claims they've used CRISPR to develop a COVID-19 no-swap test that can be confirmed positive or negative in as few as 45 minutes. Jennifer is married to her husband, Jamie Kate, who was a graduate scientist of hers. Uh, Kate is currently a professor at UC Berkeley, where they both taught, and they had a son together in 2003. Kate's work includes using genetic editing of yeast for efficient biofuel synthesis. They currently live together in Berkeley, and here's my references.